Uh, this conference but, will now be recorded. Okay. Oh, wow. Whatever, it's okay. Well, and uh, as, as my my grandfather, you know, used to ask the question, he said, what did the monkey say when he got his tail caught in the long one? It won't be long now, so we'll get through this. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, again, thank you for the introduction. My name is Craig Forley, um, Axelin Rohde. Uh, if you don't know about Axelin Rohde, uh, we have uh, four locations, uh, one here in Nacogdoches at 420 North Street, and then we have a location in Lufkin, uh, Livingston, as well as Jasper. Um, our Lufkin location houses our uh, tax department as well as our audit department, and a majority of our business services department. Uh, the Nacogdoches location uh, is predominantly tax, and uh, we have some business services associates here at the Nacogdoches office. And then our Livingston office um, has, is mostly tax and business services, and then Jasper is, is tax. So anyway, with that, uh, I'll get started. So y'all are here to learn about financial statements, and hopefully I can shed a little bit of light uh, on, on that for you. And, um, and again, you know, if you have questions, uh, please ask it. I'll do my best to, to answer those questions for you. So unlocking the mysteries of financial statements. So, okay. so why do we need to understand, you know, how to read the financial statements in business? Well, financial statements, they're the, they're the, the life of your business. They tell you exactly what position you're in. Um, they're, you know, the health of your organization. Um, it, it's your, you know, it's a, it's a point in time. It's today, you know, what, how you are today in your business, uh, and then you can also look at it for the entire year. Uh, to, and also you can run various comparative models to, to track your business and to, and really judge how you're doing. So you know, and, and it's a way for, you know, the owners um, to look at it as well as. You take your financial statements to the bank, it was discussed earlier. You know, uh, the bank's going to look at your financial position and determine whether or not they want to give you a loan. Um, or if you have a board of directors, the board of directors is going to, that's the oversight committee. So they're going to look at your financial statements and uh, and then make, you know, directives to uh, the, the officers of the corporation to better run the company or they can make decisions on if they're going to invest in this, whatever. So that's one of the importance of the financial statement. But anyway, today what we're going to talk about purpose of financial statements, how to read a balance sheet, how to read an income statement, and also how to read a statement of cash flows. And if you're not familiar with any of those, that's okay. We're going to go over them today. So uh, the purpose of financial statements. The general purpose of the financial statements is to provide information about the results of operations, financial position, and cash flows of the company. Uh, these information, the information these statements are used to help owners and managers make decisions regarding the allocation of the resources, meaning the cash, you know, various assets, you know, if they need to pay down some liabilities, you know, what happened. Um, as, a, as a group, the set of financial statements can be used by lenders. Uh, to determine whether to extend credit to the business. Investors can use these financial statements to uh, decide whether or not they want to invest in the company. You know, if you're a, if you're a corporation, uh, C-Corp or an S-Corp, and you want to, you know, raise some capital, you, you know, you can put your financial statements out there for others to invest in. Uh, and they'll take a look at your financial statements and decide whether or not they want to invest in the company. Um, as well as if you're just a, you know, an individual and you're looking at, um, you know, stock market or what have you, you can go out and look at uh, a company's financial statements as publicly traded, and you can run your own analysis and determine, hey, is this company worth investing? So that's a very good use for investors to look at the financial statements and, and help them better make a decision. Uh, governments they use the uh, financial statements to know whether you know how to tax and, uh, a company. You know they they look at your property taxes, so property tax renditions. Look at all of your assets that you have and can base you know how much they're going to you know assess taxes on. You. So maybe we'll keep those away from the government. Anyway, 
But the government, you know, it's out there to, you know, they're, they're doing their best to do what they can to, to help our communities and, and uh, you know, serve you in a way to, to, to put money in the community and, and, and to, to help the community. So anyway, uh, being able to understand your financial statements can provide you with variable insights about your company, including debts and the ability to repay them. Uh, profits and losses at a given period of time, um, whether profits have increased or declined compared to a similar past <coughs> period, uh, the level of investments needed to maintain or grow your business, or your operational expenses, especially compared to the revenue generated from them. And what I did is I, I, I don't have it out there. Um, I can send these to you if you want, but I put together some various uh, formulas, I should say, uh, little ratios in order to, that you can use to calculate and, and get an idea of how your business is actually doing. First off, um, this is not up here, but it's a one that gets called liquidity ratio. Um, this measures the company's short-term ability to pay its maturing obligations. And one of those is what's called working capital. And the formula for that is current assets minus current liabilities. And if you ever take an accounting course, you'll, you'll start hearing some of these formulas and be like, I don't need that. Uh, that. What that does is it measures the company's solvency. So you know, you take your assets, you minus all your, your current assets, you minus your current liabilities, that's what's left over, and that's what you're able to, to pay at that point in time. Uh, the current ratio which is your current assets divided by your current liabilities. That measures your short-term debt paying ability. There's also what's called a quick or asset test ratio, which is your cash, your marketable securities, and receivables divided by your current liabilities. And this is measured, also measures immediate short-term liquidity. So all of those is, is kind of measured how much can you, you know, what what's liquid? What's and when I say about liquid is, you know, cash is your most liquid asset, okay? Um, because it's cash, so you can do whatever you want to with it. It's your most liquid. And, and on that topic, when you're when you're looking at your financial statements, you really want to, uh, and I'll get into this when I, when I touch when I start talking about the balance sheet. You want to organize your assets and your liabilities by the most liquid. You want to have your most liquid at the top and then work your way down. And when I say, you know, again, on liquid, it's, it's how it's easily converted to cash. Cash is cash, so it's your most liquid. You know, you have stocks, and it may take a little bit of time to sell your stocks. You have you know, some assets, fixed assets, whatever you just sell. It takes time to sell those, so they're not as liquid, and so on and so forth. So the next set of ratios are our activity ratios. And this is, they, these measure a company's effectiveness uh, on how they use their assets. Um, receivables turnover. So if you sell stuff on credit, um, this is your, you know, it measures how, how often you, you turn those receivables, how fast you collect the cash and, uh, and you know, from your credit sales. So what that is is your net credit sales divided by your average trade receivables. Now to give you a receivables turnover. Uh, the next is your inventory turnover. This is a good formula to know how well your inventories are turning, how well they're moving. Um, that's your cost of goods sold divided by your average inventory. And this measures the liquidity of the inventory. Uh, another uh, ratio is your asset turnover, which is your net sales divided by your average total assets. And this is measures the effectiveness of the assets and they're used to generate sales. And then number of days supply in average inventory. You take 360 days divided by your inventory turnover. And that gives you the number of days it takes you to sell your inventory. Uh, lastly, are your profitability ratios. This measures your degree of success or failure of a given company or division for a given period of time. Profit margin. Your business are you going to think about profit margin? 
That's net income divided by net sales. It me measures your net income generated by each dollar of sales. Um, the, rate, the next one is rate of return on assets, which is your net income divided by the average total assets. And this measures the overall profitability of your assets. So those are just a few formulas. And if, again, if you want those, just contact me after this and uh, I can provide you with those formulas. But those are good measuring tools to, to use uh, with, your, with your business. So um, next, let's talk about how to read the balance sheet. So what is the balance sheet? I like to say that the balance sheet, and when I'm talking, when, I, when I'm discussing this with staff uh, in, in, in our department, you know, the balance sheet, that's your, that, you know, I know, I know a lot of people think, okay, I'm going to look at my profit and loss. Yes, that's important. That is very important, your income statement. But your balance sheet, I think is more important because it tells you exactly where you are today. A, a PL gives you an overall picture for the year, for a month, or whatever. Balance sheet tells you today, it tells you how much cash you have on hand. It tells you how much people owe you as far as receivables. It tells you how much property, plant, or equipment that you have out there in your, in your yard or in your building. Building is an asset, it's a fixed asset. Um, also, um, you know, how much, like say somebody owes you a, a you loaned them a money amount of money or you did an installment sale over a period of time. It tells you how much money that they owe you today. On the flip side, if you have a note, um, this tells you how much you owe to the bank or to someone else that loans you money. Um, you know, and then it also tells how much equity you have in the company. You as an owner, you know, how much you physically have left over after you take your assets minus your liabilities. So balance sheet is very important. And it, you know, unless the business owners, the employees, and the investors see what resources a company has available and the claims against those resources. The purpose of the balance sheet, like I said, it tells you where you are now today. Um, it's a snapshot of the company's financial position and broken down into assets, liabilities, and equity. Um, as of a particular date, meaning today or at 1231 the year end, 1231, 2020, 2021, how you are on that particular day. Um, and typically the balance sheet, you know, we do financial statements for clients where sometimes we do it monthly, we do it quarterly, as well as annually. Um, so that's that's your typical ending periods, is your you know, month in, financial state by quarter in, or a year in. Uh, when a balance sheet is reviewed internally by owners or managers, um, it's in it's designed to get them insight on whether the company is thriving or struggling. And again, you can use those some of those ratios that I gave you to determine that. Um, or you know, you can just look at it. Okay, I have all these bills or these notes payable here, but I only have this much cash you know, available. I owe this much next month, but I only have this much cash. I gotta do something to generate some cash to pay those bills. You know? uh, also, it gives the management the ability to diversify, to change their strategies on to put them into a better position. When it's viewed externally by investors, uh, it's trying to get them inside of the resources available to a business and how they were financed. Uh, external auditors, they use uh, the balance sheet to, to ensure a company is complying with various reporting laws. Also, an auditor, if, if you have an outside auditor come in and they're looking at your financial statements and they're, they're going to be testing various aspects of your, of your financial statements, they're also running some of these ratios. And if they see a big, huge jump in a number of one of those ratios compared to last year, that's going to throw up a flag. And, hey, I need to go test that some more and see, see what's happening. And that's something you can do. You know, you hear of theft and fraud 
in, in businesses every day. You know, run some of these ratios. And if you see a big spike in one of those, the difference in one of those numbers, it kind of gives you a clue, something's going on there. What's wrong? And you look at the numbers behind that and to help maybe determine or point you in another direction on, on, you know, where to look and see what's happening. Whether if there's fraud or, or if there's a check miswritten or whatever, you know, say you, it's kind of like on a tax return. You're preparing your tax return, and uh, a client brings in some work papers, and they say, "Last year I had ten thousand dollars in rent expense. Well, this year they have a million dollars in rent expense. Like, what in the world? That's a big, huge jump. That's going to ask. Uh, that's going to make you want to ask a question. What happened? You know." Uh, did they get another location that they're renting or it, it could be a simple fact that is the answer but it, it, you know seeing a big huge jump in numbers makes you ask a question you know is that the right number so that's a good you know it's that's one reason why i look through your financials is to determine that fact um the basic components of a financial statement are your assets your liabilities and your own, owner's equity um the assets are anything that the company owns uh, with the quantifiable value. Liabilities are anything that the company owes, uh, such as you know, payroll expense, or payroll taxes, payroll expense, debt payments. Um, it can even be some, some payables like you know, your rent and utility and taxes, depending on how you report that. Uh, owner's equity is the amount of money that would be left. Like I said, if everything was sold, and you paid all your liabilities, whatever was left over, that's your that's your equity. So, and if you ever took an accounting course, this horrifying formula. I know my first accounting class was a course. You know what is this? Assets equal liabilities plus owners' equity. What is that? No. A part of your balance sheet is your asset section. Below that is your liabilities and owner's equity. Liabilities plus your owner's equity is supposed to equal the total of your assets. Hence, balance sheet. Both of those numbers should be in balance. They should equal each other. Uh, kind of funny that they named the balance sheet when it's supposed to balance, right? Mm -hmm. But you'll, you're, you'd be surprised at how many times we've seen financial statements that, that don't balance. You know, and it's like, whoa, what happened here? But it's just my, you know, sometimes it's a you know, matter of, you know, it's key or something. But, uh, we're able to fix it, and that's what we do. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the asset portion. Uh, the assets are financial resources available to the organization that provide services or satisfy obligations. It's anything that's owned by the company and holds a quantifiable value. Assets are typically broken down, like I said earlier, in order of liquidity or how quickly they're converted to cash. Uh, they're typically tallied as positives in a balance sheet and are broken down into current assets and non-current assets. And some of the common current assets are your cash and your cash equivalents, uh, some prepaid expenses, uh, inventory, accounts receivable, and investments. And as far as investments are as determined, this is an investment that's going to be short term if it's a current uh asset it's in the investment section of the current current asset investment it's a short term held within one year meaning you're planning on turning that within one year uh non-current assets uh really the land equipment and go a building uh what we call property plant equipment those are fixed assets uh and those fixed assets they also have uh, what's called accumulated depreciation. And that also falls under the assets. And that's, that's the depreciation that you're expensing every year, uh, taking off the value of that asset as it depreciates, as it goes down in value per se uh, over time. Land uh, does not depreciate in value. Uh, that's one of the fixed assets that you have on your balance sheet that will not depreciate. Um, so the patents, trademarks, intellectual property, brands, and goodwill, those are what you call intangible assets. And those are amortized over a certain period of time. Amortization is like depreciation. You constantly subtract out and, and 
you'll have an amortization expense over on your PL and you will have a negative on your in your on your balance sheet underneath your injunction. Uh, there's other assets like notes receivable, um, also long long term investments, which like long term investments are held more than one year, and those usually will fall down in the other current assets section. So you have current assets, non current assets, and then other assets. The liability section, the liability is something the company owes or claim against that financial resource. Um, they're typically reported in order of how quickly they're able to be satisfied, meaning they're able to be paid. Liabilities are typically tallied as a negative uh, in a balance sheet, I mean, not necessarily a negative as in, you know, they show as a negative number on your balance sheet, but they are being a negative as in they're subtracted using that formula assets minus liabilities. Uh, liabilities may also be uh, included as an obligation to provide goods or services in the future. Some of the common current liabilities are your accounts payable, uh, your payroll expense, which would be your 941 payroll taxes, your Texas Workforce Commission, your unemployment there, uh, and also the uh, federal unemployment. Your FUDA also could be some rent payments, you know, that are that are due in the future, utility payments that are due in the future, any kind of debt financing or other accrued expenses. And these are to be paid within the year. Your non-current liabilities are your leases, loans, bonds payable, provisions for, for pensions, and deferred tax liabilities. These are things that are that will be paid out more than one year. So you have a note on your building or a note on a piece of land, a note on a piece of equipment, whatever. You're not gonna, you know, in most cases, you're not gonna pay that off within one year. Again, that's great, but the, your note is gonna be in the uh, non-current section of, your, of the balance sheet. You can really be paying that over time. So, and what you do there is, is you book the principal portion to the note payable, and you, and you book the interest portion the interest expense on the on the PL. The owner's equity, like I said earlier, was it's a remaining portion uh, that's left over after you take you know, your assets minus your liabilities. Um, all the assets and what's claimed against them. Uh, if you were to add up all the resources that a business owns, the assets, and subtract all the claims from third parties to liabilities, the residual leftover is the owner's equity. Owner's equity typically includes two key elements. The first is money, which is contributed to the business uh, in the form of investments and change in exchange for some sort of ownership. The second is the earnings that the company generates over time and retains. So how to use the balance sheet? Focus on using the statement as an indicator of the availability of resources. Uh, the following general questions may be answered using this balance sheet. What are the total resources of the business and when they will be available for use? What are, are the obligations of the business and when will the organization have to satisfy them? And are they available resources that are not to be considered available for general use? And this is kind of an example of a balance sheet. I don't know if they can see that online. Can they? They, they should be able they to. Show, I've shared your screen. Right. <laughs> so this is your typical balance sheet. You have your current assets, your non-current assets, and you total that up, and that's your total assets. Then you have your liabilities, current liabilities, your long-term liabilities, gives you your total liabilities, and your owner's equity, which you have your retained earnings and your common stock. And all that together, 171,900 is the total of liabilities and owners equity. As you can see, that balances to your total assets, hence the balance sheet again. Um, the retained earnings section of the owner's equity, that's your earnings throughout time. Okay. That's what's left over after your own, from the income statement that flow, that number, and that income number is going to flow over to your retained earnings section. The common stock is actually what. This is actually a corporation, so they issued stock to generate funds. People bought stock, or the owners bought their own stock. 
and contributed money to the corporation and so that they sold ten thousand dollars worth of common stock that was invested in the company. So all right. Any questions on that? If my total liabilities increased on that, mm -hmm. where would it come out of the owner's equity? Would it be come out of the retained earnings or the common stock? If to make it balance, say my accounts payable was um, instead of forty nine thousand, it was fifty thousand. Yeah, that means you bought more. I bought more something. Something. You know, prices so, went up. Right. Cost right, right. But my so, assets were all the same. Where would where would that, that would increase? Probably over to your cost of goods sold. Okay. You know, and that's and that's going to subtract out bottom line of your on your net income on your profit and loss, and that's going to flow over to your return taxes. Okay. It all, you know, one thing, and that's another thing that I think when I'm looking at the balance sheet. If you have your balance sheet right, the income statement is presentation. You know, you, you know, you might not have uh, an expense in the right expense account, or you may have uh, something up in in net income that needed to be moved down to an expense or something. You know, something something could happen. But if you have your balance sheet right, your income statement is going to be right. It just may be a presentation number. That, that bottom line number is going to be the, the, the right number if your balance sheet is right. Does that make sense? It's all the ratios that you discussed okay. earlier will be coming. You'll use the information from the information from this balance sheet. Correct. And what those are, you can use it to compare last year, run the do the same formula for last year versus this year, and compare those ratios to see how you Balance sheet, not correct information. Balance you got to go with the information that you have. If you have correct information, then you have to have good information that runs the point. But if it's not, you know, it's going to be hard, hard to judge that. So, all right. Next is how to read the income statement. Uh, the income statement summarizes all the income and expenses over a given period of time. Including the impact, the cumulative impact of revenue, gain, expenses, and loss transactions. The income statement is also known as a profit and loss. Uh, income statements are often shared as quarterly or in, and in annual reports, showing financial trends and comparisons over time. An income statement tallies all your income and all your expenses. The balance sheet records all your assets, your liabilities, and all your The purpose of an income statement is, is, is taking that information from the balance sheet, the cash that you spent, what you spend it on, and how, you know, how do we get there? You know, we spent cash, we bought, we paid for rent. We paid, you know, that's a rent expense. You know, we use cash to uh, pay a telephone bill, utilities, whatever it may be. That goes to the income statement as an expense. You receive cash, you sold something. When it comes to revenue or income sales over the cash. So the income statements answers the question how did we get there? How did we get to that point in time on the balance sheet? An income statement shows the company's financial performance over a period and tells the financial story of the business activities. The income statement helps owners and managers, investors understand the full picture of a business operational results so they can determine its value and efficiency. When reviewed regularly, you can understand how well a business is doing in relation to expected performance. And again, you can you know use those formulas, set an expectation, and and, and judge how you know how you're doing, how you're getting there, and also uh, to understand how to adjust your actions. You know, I need to I need to spend less. You know, I need to cut my expenses. You know, what I have, whatever it may be. Uh, income statement typically is included include the following information revenue it's the amount of money the business takes in you sell something that generates revenue uh, expenses of the month amount of money the company spends cost of goods sold it's the cost of component parts of what it takes when a, whatever business sales uh, and the gross profit is the total revenue less your cost of goods sold that's your gross profit Operating income is your gross profit less all your operating expenses. 
And then income before taxes is their operating income less non operating expenses. Income statements typically include the following information net income before taxes and less taxes. Earnings per share, division of net income by the total number of outstanding shares. That's another uh, formula there. Uh, depreciation is the extent of which the asset, which I touched on earlier, has lost value over time. So you're going to depreciate a certain amount of, uh, each year, and that goes over on the depreciation expense, as well as on the balance sheet, it's accumulated depreciation. And then your earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Even that, which you probably if you've listened to financial shows, you've heard them talk about it. And here's a, a view of uh, an income statement. So you had your merchandise sales. And then you had some music lessons, or, or Paul did here at his guitar shop. Uh, his cost of goods sold, 10200 depreciation expense. Wages, rent, interest, supplies, utilities, total expenses. And that will be as net income. And which I called this earlier. Uh, that number there, that 12,950, unless over on the balance sheet there was a negative $1,000. If you saw the retained earnings, the retained earnings over the balance sheet was 11,950. So I guess maybe from the prior year. There may have been a negative retained earnings. Okay. So that's this year, they have net income of 12,950. Uh, that would flow over retained earnings. That was 11,950, like I said. Uh, so they must have had a negative uh, retained earnings in the prior year. So just ways of just kind of looking at that and understanding where it all flows. All right. The cash flow statement. Um, most, I mean, I'll be honest with you, like, this is the cash flow statements used, like our own clients' cash flow statement line. Um, we have some clients that we do issue a cash flow statement. Most most, most clients, it's, it's just a balance sheet and kind of profit and loss. But I will go over the cash flow statement. It's very important uh, a statement. It shows the movement of cash uh, over, a, over a period of time. Or the accounting period. It demonstrates an organization's ability to operate in the short and long term based on how much cash is flowing in and out of the company. The purpose of the cash flow statement is it tracks receipts and uses cash over a period of time. Uh, these cash flows are broken down by general activity. You have your operating activities, you have your investing activities, and you have your financing activities. Operating activities is your daily day to day, -day operations. Uh, your investing is what you're investing in or what. You know, uh, people are investing in you, uh, and then the financing. You know, whether you're out, you know, doing you know, borrowing money for for a note or the bank, whatever, that, that'd be your finance. Or you may be financing something to somebody. It's based on the cash flow statement. You you see how much cash and different types of activities that the cash generates. It makes the business decision based on your analysis of the financial statement. All right, operating activities. Here's a few of the operating activities here. Uh, the operating activities detail cash that generate once the company delivers its regular goods or services and includes both revenues and expenses. So your cash, some cash inflows, you sell with it, goods or services. You're selling your goods, people are paying you cash. It's cash inflow. Sell of investments or trading securities. You sell something, again, yeah. somebody's paying you something for that uh, investment, they're paying you money. Cash inflow, interest revenue. You have interest in the bank, you have cash in the bank, the bank's paying you interest, that's interest revenue. Or you you have a notice receivable that you have with somebody with money, they're paying, you know, like I said earlier about the principal, and uh, you know, with a notice receivable, a certain part of that, that principal part will go to the receivable portion, and the interest part will go to interest income if it's a if it's a notice receivable. And those payable for class. You'll have a, a the, you know, it'll be able to actually an outflow on the other side, uh, but you're actually paying interest to someone if it's in that payable. But, okay, and then the dividend revenue, if you're paying out dividends, or actually if you're receiving dividends, if you're investing in something, you need to pay these people dividends. 
That's a cash inflow. And the cash outflow, inventory payments, again, interest payments, uh, wages, utilities, rent, and taxes. Those are cash outflows. You're paying cash out. And those are all involved in the operating portion. Investing activities, like I said, they are uh, generate cash flow from the purchasing or selling assets. Uh, think for the physical properties such as real estate or vehicles and non physical property like patents, use of free cash and non debt. Cash inflow, sell plant assets, uh, sell securities other than trading securities, and collection of principal loan loans. Uh, the cash outflow, the purchase of plant assets, purchase of securities other than trading securities, and making of loans to other entities. Financing activities. Financing activities detail cash flow from both debt and equity financing. Cash inflows are issues of stock, I talked about earlier. Companies still sell stock to get money from the company, so that's a financing. Uh, and also borrowing. You have to go to the bank and borrow money. It's cash inflow. Cash outflow, you're paying dividend payments to someone that bought your stock uh, or repaying principal on borrowing on the note. And then treasury stock purchase. Treasury stock is where your company is actually purchasing your own stock. Cash flow versus profit. Cash flow refers to the cash that's flowing into and out of the company. Profits refers to what remains after the company pays its expenses and deducted from the revenue. So you have your revenues, minus your expenses, and that's your profit. Cash flow is cash flow is just the physical cash flow in and out of the company. Both are important numbers to know. Ideally, cash from operating income should routinely exceed net income because a pile of cash flow speaks to a company's financial stability and the ability to grow its operations. However, having positive cash flow doesn't always mean that a company is profitable. Which is why you also need to analyze your balance sheet. One method used to calculate and prepare the operating activities, such as cash flow statements, is the direct method. There's two, there's two methods direct method and indirect method. Uh, this method, based on transactional information and the impact cash, and impacts cash during the year. Calculate using the direct method, take all cash from operations. And from operating activities, subtract all the cash disbursements from operating activities. Pretty simple. The indirect method depends on the accrual accounting method, in which revenues and expenses are recorded at times other than when cash is paid or received. Essentially, the accountant will convert net income. I probably don't know if I'm reading this, but it's, I want to make sure it's detailed here for you. Uh, will convert net income to actual cash flow by decreeing through a process of identifying any non-cash expenses for the period from the income statement. The most common and consistent of these are depreciation, reduction in value of asset over time, and amortization, the spreading of payments over multiple periods. So the cash flow is usually depicted as a negative positive cash flow. Positive cash flow indicates that the company has more money flowing into the business than it does out of the business. It's always a good thing to have more money than you can have. Uh, positive cash flow does not necessarily translate to profit, like I said earlier. And your business can be profitable without being cash flow positive. And you can have positive cash flow without actually making a profit. Negative cash flow means your cash outflow is higher than your cash inflow. Negative cash flow may be caused by expenditures and income mismatch. Or, uh, or it should be addressed as soon as possible. Negative cash flow may also be caused by a decision to expand the business and to invest in future growth. So it's important to analyze changes in your, in your cash flow from one period to another, which can indicate how a company is performing overall. And here's an example of the cash flow statement. So this is actually in the red right Start with every time. You have your adjustments here. Um, so you have your depreciation expense, you have your increase in the current asset giver. And the, the negative here on the is actually an increase. So you have your accounts receivable increase of $300, inventory increase by $39, prepaid expenses by $1,000. Those are actual increases. Uh, and then on your liability section, 
you had an increase in your accounts payable, you had an increase in your free expenses and under revenue, and so your net cash by operating activities was $24,300. The purchase of property, plant, and equipment, that's an investing activity. Uh, you, out, you bought something, so $101,000 you used to purchase property and equipment. On the flip side here, financing, proceeds from the line of credit, the payments on line of credit, $10,000, proceeds from long-term debt, ninety nine five payments on line of credit. So overall, your ending cash balance, 32 dollars If you go back to the beginning of the balance sheet, you see that your cash was $32,800. So, That's how all these things do. All these financial statements interact and relate to each other. And so the better you know how to read them, the more you know about your company. And the better you are to, to make decisions, maybe help manage to make decisions on what they need to do. So that's the overall kind of gist of financial statements. And I'll be open to questions. Uh, I tell you what, you. Know, I have it, and I will post the uh, PowerPoint and the recording. And I would like to thank Jennifer Gage, who's our in person here. Uh, that she actually prepared this presentation. So. <laughs> I will add the ratios into it. Yes, I'll, add, I'll give the ratios. By those two, so. Any questions? Could you, could you maybe explain this a little bit better? Uh, you could have the back of that. Basically, it's your earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So you take all those out of the net income statement. And, or, or if you have your net income, you add those back, and that'll be your, your net earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Because interest, you know, you know, all these expenses like depreciation, you know, that's that's really, you know, it, it's not a function of cash. You're not actually paying cash for that depreciation, but depreciation is not a cash option. It's something that's taken out every year. So you can, like I said, well, you, can say you can have a big loss on your income statement because of depreciation, because you bought a building or something, or, or, or a vehicle or a piece of equipment. And now with, you know, with a bonus depreciation, you bought a $50,000 piece of equipment you get to take all fifty thousand dollars of bonus depreciation. So before you depreciate that asset, you have a net income of, of ten thousand dollars for sales and all your operating expenses, and you had net income of ten thousand dollars. Well, then you throw in depreciation, which is a tax benefit, you know, of being able to take bonus depreciation of, of negative fifty thousand. That makes gives you a net income of forty thousand. If somebody were just looking at your profit and loss and say, okay. Oh man, they got a loss of bill twenty thousand dollars. Really and truly, you had in operating wise, you had ten thousand dollars of income. Depreciation is just tax expense, so it's really not. You know, you see what I'm saying? It kind of gives you a, an overall look at the company, adding these other factors back into it. That answer your question. Yes, Greg, can you explain the difference between the depreciation and amortization or amortization? What does that mean? It's different, it's different, uh, and it, it all depends really on what, on what typically the asset is that you're, that you're doing. Depreciation, you have uh, again, this kind of goes on, on a ta tax model or, or you know, or if you're looking at gap, you have various years or various pieces of property that you buy have different depreciation periods. Uh, the same as, you know, with amortization. 
um, maybe 15 year amortization period. And what, go ahead. So that I hate to assume anything, but I would assume that your $50,000 purchase you can use as an mm -hmm. can be used or take that depreciation off of your tax order. So that $50,000 now your your loan is still going to be your loan. Um, if you yeah, if you have a note, you know, bought, 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 bought a piece of good for fifty thousand, you have a loan, you finance it off fifty thousand. You're going to take whatever your principal amount is of your note payments throughout the year and deduct that from your note payable. The other part of that balance will be your interest, and that'll be your interest expense. You know it's not really amortized, it's, it's the it's the actual asset that's you know you're going to depreciate that for tax purposes um and, and then just reduce your note payable by the amount of principal that you're paying every or every month right? that uh, i don't know if i answered that question no i just kind of just trying to get there i guess i still i'm just trying to figure out where the amortization to Subtract what amortization is it, it's it's like you know if you flip back over on the balance sheet where are you getting that number from the subtracting it and turning it into the total balance that'd be just like on the on the on the on a PL it's going to be just an amortization expense on the PL. You're gonna have depreciation expense, that's gonna be your depreciable assets, and then underneath that you'll have amortization expense. You're gonna take a portion of, of of the property, with, if it's a patent, trademark, goodwill, whatever it may be, and you'll amortize that, amortize that over a certain period of time, you're going to take a certain, whatever deduction it is, a thousand dollars a year, you're going to deduct that thousand dollars each year over on the PL. And that, so a thousand dollars will go there in one year, and, it'll, and then it'll add to your accumulated, accumulated amortization until that is fully amortized for a couple of years, depending on the asset that you're in. Any other questions? So depreciation is really for fixed assets. Yeah, it's for like your buildings, your equipment, uh, improvement, remodel, you know, improvements, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, amateurs, I amateurizing. Yeah. Is uh, more for you know, patents, trademark stuff that you know, and, yeah, intangibles, which is intangible assets. Or it could be your startup expenses. You're just starting to come. Is inflation something you can account for in all this? Or not really? Like, what do you mean? Like, like I've been told that roughly like every year, the uh, um, economy inflates three percent. So your dollar in 2020 versus 2021 is three percent less valuable. Is that something you can account for inside of these things? I mean, if you're if you're going to run some of these formulas, yeah, you can interpret interpret put that into your into the formula. So three percent and look we'll at into the future. There are certain formulas that you can use that uh, for that. Yes. Use your current numbers, project it forward using inflation inflationary numbers or deflation. So would you say Paul's guitar shop is doing well from his balance sheet? He's more like, yes, yeah, he's doing, he's doing okay. I mean, I'm looking at his, you know, his current assets and minus his current liabilities. Current assets are more than two. He's able to pay down his short-term obligations. So he's doing okay. He made income. So I would say he's, he's doing okay. It would it'd be kind of hard to tell without looking at you know prior stuff. Maybe he just or or the situation. You know, people ask stuff about you know what on accounting. It all depends. It depends. <laughs> that's, that's really the best. It depends. I mean, the situations behind all of this. You know, you got to know. You have to know the numbers behind the answers behind the numbers. What's going on in the background to really know if they're 
but you know, just overall looking at the general picture, I would say he's, he's doing okay. I don't know, it, you know, but then again, if the guitar company is supposed to be making, should have $200,000 in cash and $10,000 of liabilities and net income of 90,000 or something like that, then I would say maybe Paul's not doing too well compared to his peers. Yeah, that's another thing. I mean, you can, and, and I think you can go out there and you can pull, you can pull industry standards, you know, um, and, and run some of these ratios to determine how you stack up to, to what the industry, industry is. And I'm not paying for some of you know, I, I am, I'm gonna be alone, I'm not. I'd look more at other things as well. So if you're going to get a loan, I'll ask this for other people that I'm really curious too. Would they want to see your balance sheet and your cash flow statement and your PL to kind of determine whether or not they want to loan? Absolutely. They're going to look at your balance sheet, PL, and uh, probably ask for past few years of tax returns. Okay. Um, so that's usually the, 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 the answer to our questions. You know, the client will call in and hey, I need a you know a copy of this, a copy of that. Um, you know, that's another thing as far as and, and, and as with us preparing financial statements, there's there's different levels of financial statements. There's a compilation, there's a preparation, and then there's what we call a write-up. Uh, a compilation. Uh, and really if if a client calls and asks for us to provide them with their financial statements, meaning we're going to print it off and physically give it to the client. That helps the engagement. If we were just doing a write up of tax return, we're not giving out their financial statements. If they call and ask for the financial statements, that helps the engagement to at least a preparation because we're physically handing over their financial statements. They can take that document, go to the bank, and the bank can turn, hey, actually, already, you know, they, they they prepare these financials, it kind of puts more liability on us. So it's engagement to at least a preparation for physically handing out the uh, financial statements. But and like a write up, like I said, is we're just trying to drop off their documents and we fix it up, we prepare a set of books for the tax just to prepare the tax return for those financial statements don't go out and go in or anything. Um, and then a compilation that's the highest level of engagement that, that we provide as far as in the business services. That actually has a letter stating management responsibilities, our responsibilities, and the cover of those financial statements to go. And that way, the client can take it to the bank and directly list out what our responsibility is and what the management responsibility is and the, and the, uh, the, the period of the financial statements. And with the preparation and compilation, that puts more liability on. On the, uh, the firm providing the financial statements, uh, it, it makes it so to SARS. Uh, and, uh, so we have to have all those go through our audit department. It's, it's subject to peer review, and uh, peer review is a self evaluation of an accounting firm by one of its peers, another accounting firm. And if we don't pass peer review, we can't do audits. So uh, very important that we have everything documented in the way. Any other questions? <laughs> I'm going to 